Senator Sanders, thank you very much for sitting down and talking with AARP New Hampshire about Social Security. Thank you very much for having me. I'm going to start with a quote that comes right from you. At a time when senior poverty is going up, our job must be to expand, not cut, Social Security. What's your plan? Well, Scott, that does sound like me. Uh, we have, throughout this country, millions of seniors trying to get by on twelve, thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 a year. I don't know how they do it. Uh, they can't afford the prescription drugs they need. They can't afford to heat their homes adequately. They can't afford the food they need to uh, maintain their health. Uh, to my mind, when I hear Republicans talking about cutting Social Security, that is reprehensible. Even worse, talking about privatizing Social Security. So what we have got to do as a nation is, first of all, to understand Social Security is not going broke. Social Security has $2.8 trillion in the trust fund, can pay out every benefit owed for the next 19 years. But that's not good enough. What we need to do is expand Social Security benefits because people can't make it on eleven, twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000 a year. And we have to extend the solvency of Social Security a lot longer than 19 years. What do we do? Well, we do what's obvious, what I think most Americans know we should do. You're making $118,000 a year, she's making $5 million a year. Right now, you're both paying the same amount into the Social Security Trust Fund. At a time of massive income and wealth inequality in America, where the rich are becoming much richer and the middle class is disappearing, it is totally appropriate to say to people who have a whole lot of money, guess what, you're going to have to contribute more into Social Security. Uh, what we do is start at $250,000. So people making more than $250,000 will pay the same percentage of their incomes into the Social Security Trust Fund as people making forty dollars or $50,000. You do that, you extend the life of Social Security to the year 2065, and you expand benefits. Second thing our legislation does is uh, I've heard some of my Republican colleagues talk about how the COLAs, cost of living adjustments, are just too generous. Well, this year they're zero. I'm not quite sure how zero is too generous. And the reason that we have inadequate COLAs is that seniors' purchasing needs are very different than 18-year-olds or 20-year-olds. We need a segregated system to determine what seniors, how much seniors are spending, what their real inflationary costs are, and they are higher than the general public because they're spending money on prescription drugs and health care, which is going up a lot faster than our uh, computers uh, or uh, video games. So uh, those are the two programs that we have, expanding benefits and giving seniors more for COLAs. As I understand the system today, when you talk about doing any of these cost of living adjustments, the conversation seems to be, we'll match that increase with where inflation is. And so you talk about CPI or, or different levels of inflation and things like that. Can you lay out and explain a little bit more about what those numbers might look sure. like? Look, here's, well, knowing it, it depends on what inflation really is, but this sure. is what we do know. Okay. If you were 80 years of age, where are you spending your money? Well, if you're trying to get by on 13, 14,000 a year, you're probably buying prescription drugs because you're old and maybe you're ill. Uh, you are uh, trying to buy food. Uh, you're trying to buy health care. That's what you're doing. Those costs are going up a lot faster than if you're 20 years old and you're trying to buy uh, an, uh, you know, some computer where prices actually may be going down. So seniors need their own uh, system to determine what their inflation is. And in general, that will be a higher level than the general population because health care costs are going up faster than other uh, basic uh, needs. How would you respond to those who would say, I I'm interested in taking a look at maybe ri raising the retirement age over a period of time and, and, and uh, expanding the size of the pool, if you will, for the length of time people will pay into the system, but I don't know if I want to go down the road that Senator Sanders is talking about. When you're looking at these different sort of philosophical issues. They're not philosophical. Look, the rich are getting richer, uh, and big money interest in Wall Street have enormous power. Uh, and the rich do not want to pay more in taxes, and I understand that. But given the massive transfer of wealth that we have seen in the last 30 years, where the middle class has kind of shrunk and people on top are doing phenomenally well, my view is that the wealthy should be asked to pay more in taxes. This is not philosophical argu arguments. This is the rich protecting their own interest. And what I would say that in any kind of civilized democratic society, you do not tell the most vulnerable people in this country, including seniors, people who are 80, 90 years of age, who have worked their entire lives, who are trying to survive, 
You don't tell them we're going to cut their benefits. You don't do that. That is immoral. That is wrong. Not in the richest country in the history of the world. Uh, amidst all of the attacks against Social Security a number of years ago, I formed and led uh, a caucus called Defending Social Security. And we work with AARP. Uh, and we work with the other senior organizations to say, sorry, you're not going to cut Social Security benefits or benefits for disabled veterans. Uh, we're going to fight back. We were successful working with millions. We had a petition of millions of seniors coming into us. Uh, so the goal right now is to make it clear that in America today, when so many of our seniors are struggling, uh, that we're going to expand benefits, we're going to extend the life of Social Security, and there is a very easy way to do that, and that is by lifting the cap on taxable income. Is there any way to find middle ground on the different ideas? Is there any way to blend what you're talking about with offering up the opportunity for people to spend some of their own money and, and, and I guess, privatize, for lack of a better word, no, the, I, this I mean, system at all? No, that's not my view. Uh, I think privatization is a disastrous idea. Look, Social Security has been perhaps the most successful federal program uh, in the modern history of America, and it is enormously popular. Uh, before Social Security in the 1930s, about half the seniors in this country lived in poverty. Today, the number is too high, but it's about 10%. So we have made real progress. Now, you have ideologically a lot of Republicans who want to privatize or cut Social Security, who want to voucherize Medicare. They're not prepared to fight to lower the cost of prescription drugs and stop the pharmaceutical industry from ripping off the American people. That's fine. That's their point of view. That is not my point of view. I think in the United States of America, the richest country in the history of the world, all of our people should be able to retire with dignity, should be able to retire with security. And that means making sure that Social Security is there for our kids and our grandchildren, and that the Social Security benefits are sufficient enough that you can live with dignity. You may have just answered it, but is there anything that you might be able to say to uh, someone who hears this and says, yeah, we got to do something, but I'm reluctant because I put this much money in, and I don't want to lose the money I put in. I'd like that back. I don't want to be feeling I got to pay for somebody else's problems. I've got my own. Well, well here's, let's talk about problems. And the problems that we're talking about is that in the last 30 years, there has been a massive transfer of wealth in America. And that is that millions of people today are working longer hours for lower wages. Middle class is disappearing, 47 million people living in poverty. And in the midst of all that, trillions of dollars have been transferred from the middle class to the top one-tenth of one percent. You have a situation now where the top 20 people in America own more wealth than the bottom half of the American people. Got that? 20 people own more wealth than the bottom half of the American people. So I think it is appropriate to say to the richest people in this country, you live in a society. We're going to protect the most vulnerable people in this country. You are doing phenomenally well. People trying to live on $12,000 a year are not doing very well. You are going to have to pay more in Social Security taxes so that all of our seniors can live in dignity. Where does this land on your priority list, going yes. to Washington? I have been a fierce advocate for Social Security, uh, for extending the life of Social Security, uh, for introducing legislation which lifts the cap on taxable income for a very long time. You're talking to the guy who founded the Defending Social Security Caucus, who was also involved uh, in the uh, understanding that the pharmaceutical industry today is ripping off the American people, charging us the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs, which means that many seniors are paying much more than they should, and sometimes they can't even afford the drugs that they need. So that's another issue we've got to deal with. You know the hallways of Washington. Yep. You know the votes. You know the numbers. You know the hurdles. How do you get this done? You get it done because you rally the American people. Nothing that I have said to you is a radical idea. I would suspect that the vast majority of the American people agree with every word that I said. So the real question is, is how do you take on the big money interest and their lobbyists who represent the very small minority? You got people from Wall Street literally who are coming down and say, we want you to cut Social Security, cut Medicare, cut Medicaid, and by the way, give huge tax breaks for the billionaire, billionaires in this country. They represent 5%, 10% of the American people. I think the point of view that I have been espousing here today represents the vast majority of the American people, and it's time that Congress started listening to the vast majority of our people and not just a handful of billionaires. On behalf of AARP New Hampshire, Senator Sanders, thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it.